I remember, you know, Coach Vice coming up to me, looking me in the eyes and saying, "Why? We're gonna run it, you know, three times off your off your pole, Coach." They're gonna know that after the second time. They said, <laughs> "Why? We're gonna need you to get get movement." Three plays in a row, each play 10, 15 yards. <laughs> it was like, "All right, maybe maybe they know what they're doing up there back there." You know, it's weird. How you been, man? Good. It's been a, this past year was the first time I got to come back and it was, it was kind of crazy to see, you know, Coach Fu and Coach Shu and I've been training with Coach Shu. So, you know, it's been a, it's been a good time. What was it like watching some of the personalities on that team go through last year? Baker Mayfield, OBJ, obviously dominate the headlines and take the brunt of it when it's not going well and obviously receive a lot of the credit when it is. Did you learn anything going through? Because I don't think there was a team in the NFL last year that had more of a spotlight on it than you guys, even though I know you missed out on the hard knock space for the most part. You know, luckily when I, when I got moved into the locker room, when I got traded, um, you know, I was put right at the locker bin where, you know, right to my left is OBJ and Jarvis lockers right next to each other. And to my, you know, four o'clock you got, or, you know, eight o'clock, you got freaking uh, all of the quarterbacks. So you got Baker, all the guys. And, you know, I knew Baker through the senior bowl. So it, uh, it was kind of cool to, you know, get to talk to him and stuff and see him. And um, again, you know, same thing I said, you know, at the senior bowl was, Hey man, you know, how's it going? He comes up to me and goes, Hey big boy. And we knew Michael Brewer. So luckily we knew someone and, you know, I said, Brew called you softy and he, you know, he laughed and, you know, he knew exactly who I was again. You know, it was it was awesome. But yeah, OBJ and uh, Jarvis. You know, talking about character. They they do have a lot of character, and they're funny guys. They're awesome guys. Um, you know, whatever the media tells you. I mean, I was having this talk a little earlier with people, and you know, whatever the media tells you, I promise you, they're they're doing their job. They're coming out to practice. They're working. You know, are they perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. Uh, is anybody in the NFL perfect? No. Right. So, <laughs> you know, you always try to strive for it, and that's one thing I can see in Jarvis especially Jarvis is, you know, his meticulous attention to detail. You know, OBJ is one of the fastest guys I've ever seen in my entire life. So, you know, and his routes are perfect. So when he runs routes, you know, when he is fast, you know, it's, it's easier for, you know, him because he's so athletic. You know, Jarvis, again, athletic, but works his butt off. And you see it when, you know, his knowledge of the game, his football IQ is through the roof. And you see why he's gotten the accolades he has when you see him practice. Has he ever blessed you? Has he given you a bless him? Yeah, he gave me a bless him. Uh, <laughs> I was invited to his. I was invited to his birthday, and uh, it was at one of the places, one of the chop houses in uh, Cleveland. And you know, I went up to him and I said, "Thank you for uh, you know for inviting me." And he goes, "You know, you're blessed. You're blessed. No worries." And I was like, <laughs> walked away real happy. But now he's a good. Why? Well, what was uh, last year like for you? You know, you get traded from the Buffalo Bills to the Cleveland Browns. It actually winds up being a great spot for you because you take over that starting guard spot. But at the same time, there was so much hype around that team last year uh, and then a lot of scrutiny in the second half of the year, including in your position group. You know, what was the whole calendar year like for you? Yeah, no, it was, uh, it was definitely crazy. So um, earlier that year, you know, you go into spring and you see guys come into the facility and, uh, you're like, all right, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, mama ain't raised no punk. So I'm, I'm going to be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm not worried. You know, it's not, it's not worry, man. It's more of like, you know, I got to do my job the best I can. It's much more of a grown up mindset than it was in, in college. It's, it's, uh, you know, this is how you take care of your family. This isn't, you know, just fun for five years and then, you know, whatever. No, this is, this is it, man. You, tomorrow it could be done. So you take every, you take every day kind of like that. Um, you do all this work just for an opportunity. And that's the hardest thing that, you know, you learn is, you know, I worked my butt off and I still got traded. You know, I, I did everything I could and still got traded. So I realized, you know, I just got to do more. If I see someone doing extra reps, I'm going to go do more extra reps. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a mindset of, you know, I'm not going to let my work get in. You know, if it's politics, it's politics. You can't control politics. You can only control what you can control. When I saw these guys, you know, it was, it was kind of cool to, you know, become friends with them. But at the end of the day, you know, we had to, we had to work. And that's something that I'm coming in this year. Like I said, 350 note cards, like uh, training since January, the last week in last weekend in January, even after an NFL season where, 
you know, most people take three weeks off, two weeks off. I was, you know, training, you know, three weeks into, uh, you know, two weeks into January. So it's, again, just gives me an opportunity when I get there. And that's, that's one thing that I learned with being traded was you work your butt off and you can still get traded. Bad things can still happen to good people, you know? No doubt about that. And you never were, you were a dominant player, obviously in college, you're a starting player now in the NFL, but what was that transition like in terms of recognizing that the competition level was so much higher at the next level? Yeah, no, uh, the best way I like to explain it is, you know, each year, each team, they got about one guy, you know, other than, Al you know, SEC and, you know, Clemson, not all SEC, but, you know, Alabama, LSU, you know, you, you got three or four guys who can rush the passer or who can play, right? You know, most of the time, you know, it's one or two guys who can play and then, you know, the backups are obviously backups, right? Um, that's not the case in the NFL. You realize real quick that their third string guy coming in has as much juice as, you know, the first team guy. Now the first team guy, obviously, Geno Atkins, you know, Aaron Donald, like there's reasons they're the first team guy, but when you see uh, their backups, they got moves too, man. That, that's the thing you realize is this is the best of the best. There, there's no time to take a breath. Right. Um, so that, that was a big, you know, that, I wish I had that mindset all the time. And you know, I, I, I loved them all people, you know, all the time. That, that was my, that was my favorite thing on, on uh, Saturdays. And you know, it's turned into my favorite thing on Sundays too. Uh, who's the best you've gone against? You mentioned some of the elite guys in the league. The drop off between the first and, you know, seventh, tenth guy I've gone against, there's not much. I'm, I'm telling you, when, when you go against a guy who knows his body, he plays, plays well, plays hard, that's the biggest thing is you get these guys who are six foot five, 310 pounds, run as fast as their linebacker who's behind them, and they're smart. You know what I mean? And they're hardworking. They're not, they're not like they don't have one, you know, check in a no area. No, I mean, these guys, Clays Campbell, you know, Aaron Donald, you know, all these guys, they, they have checks all down the yes. They, they work their butt off. You know, yeah, everybody's got juice. Everybody's got some sauce. And, you know, you kind of kind of got to put up with it. But at the end of the day, you know, you can't be soft. You kind of got to hit them in the mouth. And hopefully they respect you. Hopefully it don't hit you right back in the mouth. But. How did Virginia Tech get you ready to take that next step? Because I know that, you know, again, you're here all the time. It seems like this place and this program means a ton to you. This is my school. You know, Virginia Tech, there's nothing, there's nothing that – is better than what I have in Blacksburg, Virginia, and what Blacksburg, Virginia is than anywhere else in the country. And I knew that, and that's why I came to Virginia Tech, right? You know, when it came to Beamer and uh, Gentry, right? I came in and Mike Gentry was a god amongst men to me. And then when Ben Hilgard and, you know, Coach Fu come in, absolutely blessed to have those two too. I mean, you got a coach who knows exactly what he's doing and works as hard as he can to get those boys ready. And then Fu, who, you know, as much as he wants to say it's not X's and O's, that man knows how to you know, run playbook, but he's exactly right. What he came in and he taught us was a huge lesson, right? And he was the one who, you know, originally taught me or originally told me how to put it into words is, you know, you work so hard for an opportunity, right? You know, that first year he said, look, you know, it's not X's and O's, man. It's going to be how hard we're willing to work. That first year we went from, you know, cupboards weren't dry. I think Fu knew that, uh, that 2016 year, we went to the ACC championship after, you know, close, close calls, but, you know, just over 500 and then we could get a 10-1 season just because people bought in you can have the best game plan you can have all the right x's and o's but you know at the end of the day you, it's an opportunity so that's one thing that Fu really got uh instilled and you know definitely something i took to the next level with me why well, we could do this with you all day man but i know you gotta get back to some of your browns preparation yeah, wasn't this supposed to be like 10 minutes turns into yeah 30. well if you weren't so damn talkative i mean I'm sorry <laughs> i don't get to talk to anybody right <laughs> this is see hokey fans what you're seeing here is they finally took the lid off he's at the next level we can't muzzle him anymore because i'd be like every week i'd be like hey can we get wyatt no, <laughs> no sorry can't happen <laughs> i'm glad we got you now man stay safe and uh, can't wait to see you back with the browns this year buddy Yes, sir. I appreciate you, John.